Hello, thank you for joining me. I'm Amanda McKay, and this is another episode of Growing Exposed, the show that takes you inside the world of cannabis growing. In today's episode, we're gonna take you to a federally licensed facility where all of the cannabis produced goes to medical patients. These patients are either managing or curing a variety of ailments. Now they follow some pretty rigid regulations at this facility. Our camera crew and tour guide were quarantined and given booties and hairnets before being allowed to enter the growing rooms. Of course, security is also very tight. We had to pass through several fob-controlled steel doors that ensure only authorized personnel can gain access. And as you suit up for each individual room, meticulous records are kept on who enters and who exits. Much like Fort Knox, there is a lot of green inside, and we are going to give you an insider's view. But first, here's a quick rundown of what else you can expect to see on this episode of Growing Exposed. First, we suit up to visit the place where all good crops start, in the mother room. What you're looking at around here is the cleanest, nicest, bug-free, healthiest mums you possibly can get. Blending in organic tea for 36 hours to find out why it's all worth it. Organically grown material, it is often fetching a higher price for the gardener and this motivates them to engage in these ecologically sound gardening practices. As we hear one man's story of how cannabis saved his life. It was an amazing plant that gave me so much and with all the synthetic drugs I was on and I was trying to get more healthier so I started getting organic foods. I need an organic medicine, right? Justin breaks down the fundamentals of a good LED light. LEDs are not HPS or metal halides. They don't perform the same. Finishing up in the flower room full of aromas with only a week left before harvest. The flavors and aromas that are coming off these plants, when you touch the blueberry, it smells just like blueberry. The tangerine over there, you touch it, you feel it. It smells like full oranges, it's wonderful. Medical facilities tend to keep a lot of varieties in their mother room because different strains for different pains. About to show us around this plethora of plants is Justin. He's got over 20 years in the industry and is considered an expert in the hydroponics world. So let's get this tour started in this never before seen 200 light garden. Hey guys, it's Justin. So I'm at a huge 200 light medical garden. And this is where it all starts. All good gardens start in the mother room. All these varieties are predominantly hybrids. There are some sativas, there are some indicas, but with hybrids, you're gonna get the best of both worlds. You're gonna get a variety that gives you that, that stone with the happy, upbeat feeling. Most varieties on the market today are hybrids. What you're looking at around here is the cleanest, nicest, bug-free, healthiest mums you possibly can get. When it comes to growing, you want to start off with plants that are healthy. This is the most important thing, because if you don't start off with good cuttings or good genetics, you may as well just give up. Your veg isn't gonna be good, and your flower most definitely is not gonna be good. So these guys have done a very effective job at making sure there's no problems with fungus gnats, no powdery mildew, no mites. All these plants are completely clean, healthy, and doing very, very well. You can tell these guys are doing things properly because they've got great ventilation, they've got pure water filtration, and uh, you know, these things are very important. These are little, processes that go into making sure the final end result is going to provide the best bang for the buck or the best yield possible. Beautiful, healthy varieties of plants. Get ready for more of this garden after the break. This is the pre-veg and we want to make sure all the plants are totally uniform, disease-free and ready to go in the overall veg room. Now this is about an hour away from our headquarters. It's beautiful up here. Yeah. This is Pacific Northwest. This is, this is what it's all about. This is why we are where we are. We can live anywhere in the world. We can choose to live anywhere we want. We love living here. I agree. First kayaks ever this lake, probably ever. 
I would hazard a guess and say first human beings in this lake. I mean, this is a glacial fed lake. We're up here to demonstrate how beautiful and how clean our water is and the environment that we have and care and protect. Every little bit of green planet nutrients encompasses this. The purest, cleanest water, the, the highest quality source nutrients. We care very much about ensuring that your plants get the best nutrition possible. All the water that we get comes from lakes and glaciers like this. One major advantage we have over every other nutrient manufacturer globally. I think green plants have a major role in the future of the industry. We're innovators, we create new products every day, and we'll be at the forefront of the movement. We're quality focused, we're result based. We have to make sure that the end user has a positive experience every single time they use a green plant product. One of the things we really wanted to focus on was the fact that this garden is 100% organic. But since the facility wasn't about to share their proprietary formula, we can only tell you a bit about the process. Starting out with large barrels, they use water that has been filtered. They then blend and circulate their secret recipe of organic tea for a total of 36 hours. This gives it the time required for the colonization of microbes, which essentially turns this into a living food that can now be fed to the plants. It requires extra effort and time to make this organic tea, but a lot of growers are starting to adapt to this and they say it's well worth it. Here to comment on why is author of The Grower's Handbook and our resident expert, David Robinson, and his teachings of the Garden Sage. Today more than ever, it is worth it to garden organically, to minimize our carbon footprints and provide the healthiest plant material we possibly can. The public definitely appreciates organically grown material. It is often fetching a higher price for the gardener and this motivates them to engage in these ecologically sound gardening practices. But beyond that, we get a lot of benefit from what Mother Nature has to offer beyond the 16 essential nutrients that science recognizes and chemical fertilizers provide. These things in nature are multifaceted. We have enzymes, microorganisms, bacteria that stimulate root growth, facilitate nutrient uptake, humic and fulvic acids which do the same, and many other substances which can contribute to flavors and aromas that might not otherwise be enhanced. Organic gardening can definitely give us many benefits that aren't present with chemical fertilizers. For example, in worm casting teas, it's laboratory proven that some of them can raise the levels of chitin enzymes in plants, which we now know repel pests and disease. So all of these practices can be incorporated and utilized not only to minimize our carbon footprint, make our product more attractive in the marketplace, but to enhance the productivity and vitality of our plants. Thanks, David. Now, let's head over to hear about a personal story from a medical user and organic grower who claims cannabis has saved his life. Cannabis saved my life. It truly, truly saved my life. I was on an array of pharmaceutical drugs. I took 33 pills a day to deal with my pain control. $1,488 a month was being paid to the pharmacies for my painkillers. <sighs> Be working on this beautiful mother now for probably about six weeks. And of course, always using organics. Medi One, it's what I love, it's what I use. It's about, it's about the organic medicine that really, really uh, plays a key role in, in uh, well, helping myself. Oh, uh, 2005, I made a wrong move um, and I tripped over a box of vinyl and I fell out a two foot opening and fell 28 feet on the concrete. Um, I hit my head on the second floor, I fractured my skull and broke my neck in four places, a C6 burst fracture. And they said I fell unconscious, free fall 20 feet onto my left side by shattering my left arm, breaking my hip, shattering my ankle, breaking my teeth. Just, just 18 major injuries and I've had six major surgeries. And this plant, Medi Kush, 
is the one that truly gave me the pain relief I was so looking for. With all the synthetic drugs I was on, with all the pharmaceuticals, I was really chasing pain a lot. And I guess it was this, it, this plant itself, it was, it was so amazing because the THC and CBD levels, the ratios we were looking at, it, it truly started helping me every day. It, it, it helped me with my muscle spasms, it helped me with my anxiety, it helped me with my severe chronic pain. It, it, was, it was truly a lifesaver for me. It got me off the pharma and gave me my life back. So I go on the internet here and you have your Treating Yourself Winning Expo Cups. And this is uh, someone started a little breeding growers about John Burfellow's Medi Kush and how cannabis saved my life. I'll be growing it for the rest of my life. Uh, in 2011 and 2012, I won first place in 2011, Medi Kush. Medi One is all I used in Promix. And there's the bud from that winning cup too. And there's my second place in 2012 with using Medi One and Medi Kush. You can see this stuff works. Both still have my buds in here. There's my cups. Get ready for more of the tour after the break. This is a 50 light bedroom. Once these guys are probably another foot, foot and a half taller, they've grown through the canopy, they're gonna flip this whole room and put it right into flower. So you're saying I can ask this cat any question? The cat is connected to the computer. You just type in the question, it will read his mind. There's the answer, Cole. You're the man! I've been looking for this for weeks. So far, we have visited a mother room full of cannabis varieties, explained the organic process they use to feed their plants, and why they use it. We've also heard one example of how this plant is changing lives for the better. Right now, let's get back to Justin as he makes his way through the vegetative and flowering rooms, spending some time explaining what to look for when considering using an LED light in the flowering room. So once we're taking cuttings off the mums, they go under the domes and in a cutting tray for approximately two weeks. After they've rooted, they go into the pre-veg stage. This is the pre-veg, and we want to make sure all the plants are totally uniform, once again, bug-free, disease-free, and ready to go in the overall veg room. That's next. So here we are. We took the babes from the pre-veg room, and now we're in the actual vegetative room. This is a 50 light bedroom. Once these guys are probably another foot, foot and a half taller, they've grown through the canopy, they're gonna flip this whole room and put it right into flower. So the whole room here is controlled on cranks. All lights are on bars going across the room and they're actually on a little uh, crank or a winch that raises and lowers the lights to adequately light the whole plant canopy. Now, if you're, if you're in a position where you have too much light, you're gonna put the plants under stress. And if the plants are too, if the lights are too far away, you're gonna be not giving enough lumens to the plants and not creating the ideal environment. Apart from that, the garden's completely beautiful, uniform, properly trellised. And as the plants vegetate through the trellis, they're now completely supported for the overall strength and weight of the future flowers coming on. This is a 40 light garden. These are all just coming into flower. They're about a week and a half in, so the flips happened and they're just starting to stretch and you're starting to see the actual uh, flowers start to form ever so slightly. You can tell a good grow room by the amount of movement within the whole room. There is no one area where the leaves are getting blasted. Every leaf in this room is moving and dancing beautifully. The overall canopy and overall health and structure of the plants are really, really ready for a good yield. So we got a little rundown here. There's a 600 watt LED behind me. Nine plants. This one's predominantly sativa. And uh, doing not bad. Predominantly when you get a, uh, an LED light, you're getting reds and blues. They're not full spectrum. 
but this one's doing relatively well for compared to a lot of uh, LEDs on the market. You're seeing decent production, uh, decent trichome production. The trikes are actually coming out the leaf and uh, the overall health and vitality of their plants are pretty good. Uh, LEDs are not HPS or metal halides. They don't perform the same. So this plant or these plants aren't going to look as fantastic as something that's grown under something that has a higher Kelvin temperature, more heat, uh, more intensity. LEDs just don't have the ability to drive through the plant itself. Um, I'm a big fan of LED for power savings and for full spectrum. So two things you want to find out when you're buying an LED is, one, is it full spectrum? Second, with a lot of LEDs, they have fans that are uh, cooling down the drivers. So above every driver of the LED, there's a fan. And in the grow room, you've got a lot of potential pollen, potential dust. Uh, a lot of grow rooms aren't a very clean place. And when you're running an LED that uh, has the ability to absorb and take in that dust and have a fan fail, that's the problem with most LEDs on the market is because they're using fans to cool the drivers. One, fans use electricity, so your power bill goes up, so the efficiency of the light goes down. And two, more importantly, you have massive failures with a lot of LEDs because the fan failed and it burned out that LED. They need the fan to cool down the driver itself. LED is gonna be the future, but make sure you find an LED. I recommend the Spectrum King. Um, it's a really nice LED. It's using a liquid glycol and a bunch of blades within it to cool down the overall driver so there's no fan to break the LED and uh, it's full spectrum. When you look at the light, it looks like natural sunlight. It's running approximately 92 CRI. CRI standing for Color Rendering Index. But the closer and the more full of spectrum you get, the overall healthier the plant's gonna be because all plants, regardless of uh, being grown indoors or outdoors, they're accustomed to be grown under full spectrum. They have been growing for thousands of years under the sun, which is the fullest spectrum light you can get. So the closer we can get to replicate the sun, the overall healthier the plant's gonna be. That's why metal halide grow and vegetate a beautiful plant. And HPS, even though it's monochromatic and predominantly a red spectrum, is gonna provide the intensity and the drive to create a bigger, heavier harvest. So the best of both worlds, we can blend the spectrums between full spectrum and HPS. So uh, what I recommend is running a Spectrum King low wattage, 450 watts, with an HPS light, be it choose whatever HPS light you want. Uh, those in combination, so you're getting the, the intensity and the full spectrum light, that tends to provide the overall healthiest, biggest harvest you're gonna see. But not bad for an LED. Uh, for only 660 watts and nine plants, it looks pretty good. You probably got another uh, three weeks still harvest on these plants. But looking overall pretty healthy. But not compared to the flower room right beside it. Come on, let me show you. Get ready for more of the tour after the break. Find a balance moving through the paint, but they steady found bearing on my fruits, feed them my battalion. Take it fast, you can take it slow. We don't take no breaks, we just take control. In the last segment, Justin stumbled upon a corner where they were testing an LED light against the classic HID lighting that most growers have come to rely on. In this final room, they've decided to stagger and mix both metal halide and high pressure sodium bulbs together. Justin explains the benefits and shows you how amazing a 100% organic crop should look when you are only a week away from harvest.
So this is it. This is what it's all about. We've got our mums taking supreme health of them and done incredible phenol choosing and found the best varieties to grow the best overall flowers. We're about seven weeks in here in the whole garden. We've got blueberry here, we've got Cali mist and tange bud over there. The flavors and aromas that are coming off these plants, when you touch the blueberry, it smells just like blueberry. The tangerine over there, you touch it, you feel it. It smells like full oranges, it's wonderful. This is what it's supposed to look like. The plants are all standing up. The whole canopy, once again, is very uniform. There's good light transmission into the canopy. So the plant itself is covered in sugar, resin, all the way through. The density is spectacular. These things are rock solid. So in this garden, the grower is choosing to mix spectrums. They're running a metal halide with an HPS. Now when you're doing that, you're taking advantage of the full spectrum of the metal halide and the monochromatic full red of an HPS. And you're blending those two spectrums and getting the best of both worlds. Because any garden that you're full HPS, you tend to have overall plant health that's not quite as good as a full spectrum. Like I said earlier in our video about LED lighting, plants respond best to full spectrum. They've been growing for thousands of years under the sun. And all we're trying to do is replicate the sun indoors. And anytime you can blend spectrums and get the best of both worlds, because every light has its shortcoming and every light has its strength. And when you're dealing with uh, high, uh, high intensity discharge bulbs, HPS has the red, it has the punch, that's gonna drive the light into the canopy, and it has the metal halide beside it, it's gonna provide the spectrum, and it provide the overall vitality and health. These metal halides, and the fuller the spectrum it is, it's really gonna boost up the immunity in the plant. And that's very important for overall health to your, to your, to your cannabis. But that's what a garden is supposed to look like. This is it. End to end, full of beautiful bud. And uh, all the work that went into this, it's crazy, but it's well worth the effort when you look at the overall production in the end. I want to thank these guys for showing us an incredible medical garden and uh, showing you, the grower, exactly what you should be doing. Uh, this garden is top notch from their air conditioning to the amount of lights, the quality of lights, the spectrum of lights, everything. These guys are doing things 100% and they're doing it all organically, which is not a very common practice within our uh, industry. You may be foregoing a little bit on yield, but you're gonna make it up in quality. So, it's incredible. Beautiful garden. Thanks for having us and thanks for watching. This concludes our tour, but if you want more, it really doesn't have to end here. Go to our website at growingexposed.com and join in on the conversation. We have lots of other exclusive videos relating to the hydroponic industry, including a complete tour of John's setup and more behind the scenes footage. But for now, I am Amanda McKay and this grow has been exposed. <laughs>